I'm here today with John Allison. He just finished the Salish 100, and he's here to tell us about that event, all preparations, and why you chose the Buccaneer. Yeah, I'll start. I'll start kind of from the beginning, and it's a little bit of an odyssey. But uh, I, I know about this event for a while. It's only been going on for about three years, and I am in Texas, and have done the Texas 200 which is a similar style event where boats get together and sail from point A to point B, camping along the way. The 200 in Texas makes, I would say, a couple hundred miles up the coast. The Salish 100 is designed with shorter legs because it, it's almost always light air conditions. So, so making 100 nautical miles or so over a week's time is about right. But I'd known about the event, wanted to do it. This year, I decided to do it. Now, the Salish Sea is the area that encompasses pretty much the Puget Sound area. And I, I guess you'd consider San Juan, to, uh, the, the Strait of San Juan as well. But it, it, it comes from the, the Native American Salish people. That was the original sort of, you know, residence of the area. And so Salish Sea is, is, is where, where, how this is usually described. And it encompasses a lot of different sort of, a lot of different types of water. Okay. There's open water in the sound and shipping lanes now. And a lot of passages, a lot of, a lot of islands. And the Buccaneer sort of came up, sort of, I won't say by, by accident, you know, by, but uh, it was, I was kind of on the lookout a little bit. The boat I was going to use is a as a heavy trailer sailor, swing keel type boat, which which is great for the event, but really terrible to haul for four days across the country. Uh, so I I sort of conjured up this boat one night. I was uh, telling my wife about a couple of months ago, as a matter of fact, when I was starting to get ready to to really put the boat in shape. I said, "Man, I'd be." I'd be money ahead if I if I could find a mutineer or buccaneer. Um, I know it would trailer better, and I think it would do the event real well. And uh, the next morning, literally the next morning, I I looked on the uh, uh, Craigslist and found this boat, probably probably uh, less than a mile from my house, right in my neighborhood. And so I went to look at it right away, and it, and it's you know it's the typical Chrysler boat, knew it needed work, but it was obvious that it was going to be pretty good shape and so it was that was that I was going to use that and when I got a hold of one of the organizers of the event Jerry Armstrong I talked to him and asked him specifically about the Buccaneer and turned out he he owned owned and sailed the Buccaneer and was real familiar with the boat and he said sure it's going to be just fine so and, and it did turn out to be just fine so from there it was a couple months of rehabbing the boat like we do, not always in this case a, a, a particularly fastidious job, but getting the job done, making it strong, making it work, and making sure that it was safe, would make the trip, make sure the trailer was right, make sure it was going to be good on the water, and also setting it up for camping, which is really different for Buccaneers. And I know, I don't know of anybody who's, I, I doubt that anybody has spent more more time sleeping on a buccaneer than I have right now at this point. <laughs> I don't think I would take that bet. I think you. I think you'd win that hands down. I don't, I don't know if anybody else has ever slept on a buck. I don't. Think, I don't think, and I won't. I won't necessarily recommend it though. I, I have to say again, absolutely got the job done, and 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 we had a wonderful week or so on the water, and I can tell you more about that as we go. That sounds great. So how much, the, obviously you did, you had to re-get the boat in shape, but how much just preparation did you have to do just for the trip itself? Just for the trip, aside from the, aside from anything I wanted to do on the boat to get it, to get it, you know, seaworthy, I needed to, well, I guess part of the, some of the stuff I did with the boat, I wouldn't have done without having to, having to do this trip built a, a, a nice a trailerable cover for it because I knew it would be roading it for a ways. I made a nice boom tent and that's that's on the website I, or on the Facebook page. I put a, I kind of followed that build 
pretty pretty closely. So everybody, anybody who's curious, is, has has those pictures to look at. I rigged up, and I'll show you this on the boat when, when you want to. I, I rigged up sleeping platforms that I could that where we actually have a place to lay down and sleep. I had to figure out camping gear for the boat and off boat camp and where all that equipment where i was going to put it how we were going to cook how we were going to you know kind of get get everything seen to and i, I was pretty un being unfamiliar with the event i sort of had to prepare kind of over prepare because i really didn't know anything about the you know the the, the temperatures the you know the, the the stops we've been making the the conditions anything like that so i I kind of had to guess at a lot of stuff and, and like I say, over prepare a little bit, but getting aside from just the basic, you know, making the sails work, making the boat run, making the boat not leak, all that stuff, which as, as we all know, are, there's plenty of work to be done there. I did all the, all the basic stuff that, you know, at the, that you always do on these boats, you know, rework the centerboard pivot and uh, centerboard gasket caulked them a hundred different you know bolt heads and such placed you know uh, upsized a lot of bolts and and the fasteners fortunately this this boat had been sort of gone over so all the stuff is there pretty decent racing trim you know it's got a spinnaker snout and all that was in shape had all the sails pretty good sails Although they were 30 years old, they still had some decent shape. And slipping the bolt rope on the main gave me really pretty nice, nice shape. But you know, all that stuff that you that you just have to do on these boats, redo the the woodworking and the woodwork and the centerboard top, or run some rigging the right, you know, kind of a more uh, more proper way or more more efficient way. After I did all that, then that's when the camping part started and making that all work and then making sure a trailer can make it for 2,000 miles or 4,000 miles by the time I get back. So there was, was all that stuff to be done completely aside from any consideration of sailing, which to be honest, I hadn't done in about five years. So I was kind of rusty. Mm -hmm. It was a mid seventies Chrysler then, or it is, a, I believe, 78. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's in, you know, pretty good shape. The hull is a little soft in a few places. And I want to get after that when I get back to to Austin. I hope I can uh, probably probably rip the seat tops out and and uh, and get in there and get all the old foam flotation out of there and, and, and get some 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 reinforcement in there and then, then refoam it. Talk just a little bit about the actual trip and then maybe start showing us everything you've done on the boat. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, once it sort of got to, uh, you know, go time, I threw as much stuff as I could throw into the truck. I got the boat hooked up, made sure everything worked and took off, drove for four days and got to Olympia on the 12th. And so I had a couple of days of, of time to kind of prepare things figure things out, sort of sort things out. My son, Jared, who did the event with me, flew up on the 13th. So we, we had time to sort of sort things out, figure out how to sleep on the boat, which I had done on the trailer on the way up in a couple of beef campgrounds, which worked quite well and saved a motel fee. Once we got the truck at the other end of the of the course. Then on the 15th, we started sailing. And uh, I had wanted to maybe get out and sail a little bit before we did that, but we just got in the water and went. And that was fine. It worked out real well. We had light air. I guess most, all but one day really was pretty light air. And we had to work with the tides. The organizers had figured it out so they could say, go you know, leave at this time, go there, go there, go there, be here by this time. So working the tides, uh, which at the south end of the Sound are pretty impressive. There's a, like a 20 foot tidal swing in the south end of the Sound. 
So for anchorages, things like that, you kind of get out to work around that stuff. The first day, nice basic spinnaker run, light, nothing to it. Had a good motor on the boat. The guy had loaned me a Suzuki 2.5, which was really a great motor for this for this trip and for that boat. Second day, pretty much the same. I guess the first night we shore camped because we had a place to tie the boat up. Second night, we were we tied up to a little dock at a state park marina. So we slept on the boat. We had been sleeping on the boat in the marina anyway, so we knew how to do it. Third, third day, I guess we, we headed into Gig Harbor, which is a nice little port and, and harbor and marina, several marinas there. So that was a little more in civilization. We could, we could camp at the, at the uh, marina dock in the boat and also go, you know, get, get beer and food and stuff like that. And that was great. Next day, we went to uh, Blake Island which is, if you ever get into this, to this area of the, of Washington, Blake Island is just incredible. Tiny island, really just across the sound from Seattle, but the views are just breathtaking from there. So we had a great shore camping night that The next day we went to, we went from there to Kingston, which is up more to the north end of the sound. We were a little concerned about the weather forecast because there were rumors of pretty heavy winds, heavy around here being, you know, 10 to 15 to, or, or over. And they were going to be from the north, right on the nose. So we were a little concerned about that. But And, and I already knew that uh, the Buccaneer will take on water if you hit a barge wake from the side because <laughs> we'd already slopped the water just from a basic wake. You know, it didn't take much. So we, uh, that, that particular time we were, we had the spinnaker up and, you know, you can't, you can only do so much with a spinnaker up and it was very light anyway. And so a little, just a little roller or wake came from the side, you know, bounced the boat around a couple of times and just, just slopped right over the side. Nothing, nothing for, of any consequence. That day turned out to be just the most glorious sailing day ever. We, for about six hours. And we did have to motor for just through dead spot. There was a probably an eight knot wind, almost steady for, yeah, for six hours for almost 15 nautical miles. And we just tacked and tacked and tacked. And, <laughs> and uh, we, we sort of, sort of played like we were racing, just like it's, it's kind of compulsive after a while. You just try to find the best angle and get in phase and make the sails work. And so it was a really engaging day we left pretty late after all, most of the fleet was gone and we absolutely sailed completely through the fleet that we were you know, some of the first to get to the other end this boat is much faster than than almost any other boat in the in the fleet Th those boats being a lot of wooden boats traditional boats rigged boats gaff riggers different different kind of boats very cool and it was a very picturesque fleet but we kind of just we just blew through them. There was, we, we were, I think the fastest we clocked our boat speed was probably close to six and a half knots going upwind. And so it was doing exactly what a buccaneer is supposed to do. And that was in, yeah, probably eight knots of wind. I don't think we saw, we might have, we might have seen a 10 knot gust, but there was a lot of six to eight pretty much all day. So that was a great day. And then, uh, from there, we uh, moseyed over to where our truck is, had another day of sailing and motoring, and, and that was pretty much the event. Okay, so all in all, it was, what, six, five, six days to go 100 miles? Yeah, because we peeled off before the rest of the fleet. The rest of the fleet went over to Port Towns, and my truck was over in Muckleteo. If you look at a map, you can see that it's on opposite sides of the sound. We just had made arrangements. We probably got fewer than, a, than 100 nautical miles, but not by a whole lot. But we were, we were six days of sailing and five nights of set, right? Five nights of camping before we got back to our truck. And the rest of the fleet would have gone on to another stop and then uh, hopped over to Port Townsend after that. So, so even though we hopped out a day early, more or less, 
we yeah we still made we made most of our hundred nautical miles. So did you provision all the food on the boat or? Uh, yeah, pretty much. I mean, we we could well put it this way. I I knew that we could get a meal in a couple of places. We made arrangements to have decent food on the boat for all the meals we needed, plus an extra if we needed it. There was one place where we stopped and got an extra couple of cans of soup. Uh, so we didn't have to load up quite as much as we would have. I mentioned the Texas 200, and that's an event where, man, you, you pretty much got to take everything you need, including all the water for, for, for five days or, or almost six days of, of, of provisions. Here, we got a little bit of a break. There was a Gig Harbor and Kingston as well. Um, you could get good craft beer and plenty of uh, restaurants and things like that. So we got a we, we got a couple of nights with food and showers and and good beer, but otherwise we had everything on the boat that we needed, and we're able to cook nice meals, you know. Yeah, we had a three, two or three, a couple of boxes of like you know a tup, big Tupperware tubs of food things, a lot of some dried stuff and some cereal and things like that. But we could take a small ice chest and around here, ice lasts a long time. So we had cool stuff, fresh vegetables. So we, we had everything pretty well. And a lot of stuff will fit up in the uh, cutty of the of the Buccaneer. So that's a nice thing. Yeah, that's the one I think about the those old Chrysler's. They do have a lot of cutty room up there. Yeah, there's like, I, I will say this. We, we the, the day that, I, that we sailed up, uh, upwind, we made the decision to tr to put some of our stuff on another boat there's a lot of boats I, 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 several big uh, chase boats you know support boats we were able to dump all of our camping gear tents and bedrolls and a lot of stuff onto another boat so we really lightened up and I, that really helped a lot the boat behaved a lot nicer it's it doesn't really like to be lugged down with an extra i don't know 100 or 150 pounds or I don't even know how much <laughs> you know camping gear and stuff like that all right if you want to go ahead and maybe show us the boat a little bit so this is this is the boat you know typical it's been painted a couple of times yeah, as you can see by the peel and paint when I certainly haven't had time to repaint it you can see here I put the the bed boards in that's the main thing to show I've got them in on the, the starboard side here not on the port yeah. side and you're, um, you're able to store those on the boat? Yeah, I made them, and that's, this, this kind of took some doing. I found the size that would fit into that cuddy and go up up into the front, sort of nestled in beside and under the, uh, the, the spinnaker chute. And it's a, a, a complete pain to do it every single time. But they went there, and they stayed there, and it worked out real well. This is uh, the back here. I've got two one foot by four foot pieces that's that are hinged lay yeah. down there like that spanning this here that you you got to get something underneath here uh the, the 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 life jackets or or boat seats that works pretty well but you got to support this okay. and this is three eighths just pine plywood it's it will not support weight here but with something supporting it work pretty well this is one piece of uh, uh, four feet by 16 inches, which will, that is the size that'll fit in there, no bigger. And this is a, another piece that's whatever makes two feet from that, eight inches, I guess, whatever that is. And that is sort of hinged on with duct tape or gorilla tape, like that. Wow. You can see that. So that we're spanning from the, from the seat across to the centerboard trunk with this piece. And that's pretty important. That gives it some integrity. And I'm not a small person. And I, I, I did not uh, stress this too much in terms of laying on it for, for hours at a time. I cut out for the track there and just cut a little, cut a little slot to fit that, fit around some, some pieces there uh, of the cleats and stuff. You got to take the jib car off, obviously, when you want to sleep. And so we stow those somewhere. But with this in place, and with one of those two-inch foam, self-inflating foam uh, bed, camp, bed, camp bedding laid across, 
you know, it was great. It was fine. I'm, I'm getting old and I don't like being uncomfortable, but we made it and uh, it worked out for pretty well. With the boom tent on, it's pretty, pretty tight quarters, but it didn't take much to get to sleep either after sailing all day. So that's that, the typical, to the stowage, you know, we just kind of got everything in there that we needed. We had, have room in the back here for, for a uh, battery and stuff like that. And we had the uh, electronics. I did put a lot of time into it, but it's, it's, a, it had to be a little bit, a little bit less than, less than fastidious, like I mentioned before, but we got things done underneath the boom tent temperatures you, you were never cold at night or we you had pretty good ambient temperature? Um, the it was cold it's uh, it they have they've had a, a cool spring here and the temperature stayed pretty cool throughout the event and being that the uh, the water temperature is in the range of 50 or so the boat stayed cool yeah. And so I, I didn't actually sleep warm for, <laughs> until I, until I put all my clothes on and, 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 and found some stuff to cover. The, in a typical situation, normal summer temperatures, uh, I'd be quite fine. In the, in, I would not want to, do, to if it were October and it were going to be in the forties, I'd want a really, really nice sleeping bag. And that's one thing that I, I didn't pack a heavy sleeping bag because I didn't want to take up the room. So I had a bedroll with the basic blanket and that sort of thing. And I just had to put a lot of clothes on at night. But uh, we, I left 110 degree heat in Texas when I left. Yeah. So <laughs> I didn't mind being cool. The trip overall was wonderful. My son and I, who we sailed a lot before, we got a lot of great sailing in and we're kind of able to reconnect on the, on the boat and sort of get in the groove. And that's always fun. And the, 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 the event itself, absolutely stunning scenery everywhere. Really wonderful group of people. Anybody who gets a chance to do it, I, I would, you know, it builds up pretty fast, but, but it, it is a, it is a worthy, worthy sort of thing. I, I don't know how, how many times I'll be able to do it because hauling up here from Texas is a long, that's a job, you know, Yeah. but I, um, I the event itself. Uh, I would say is a absolute was an absolute success for me, and and really is a a high spot for anybody who would ever get a chance to do it. How many miles is it from Texas up there? Two thousand, wow. oh, a little over two thousand. Is that right? Yeah, just about twenty. Yeah, and it was it broke up into four eight hour days to Portland, where Mark Downing, one of the one of our right. Buccaneer guides, right. uh, it lives. And was was kind enough to let me stay the night, and that was great. Oh. I got to meet him and his wife, and and hang out and have a nice meal and and relax a little bit. Uh, and then it's just a couple hour hop up to uh, up to Olympia from okay. there. So that worked out absolutely wonderfully, and it was a good drive. Any final thoughts? I just say I'm 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 happy that I found this boat, and I and I like being back in a Chrysler boat. This boat just feels like home, and and I like this boat a lot, and it really did, it really did the job for this event.